Hey everyone. So today we'll be looking at a problem called find the second largest element in a binary search tree. So by now you should already know the difference between a binary tree and a binary search tree. And that's the key point to this problem. So with this problem, it's specifying a binary search tree. A binary search tree essentially enforces order in which for every node, the left node will always be smaller than the parent and the parent will always be smaller than its right child. So in essence, smaller numbers will always, or smaller values will always be on the left and larger values will always be on the right. So if we look at this tree that I have written right here, you can see that three right here is the parent and the smaller value one is to its left and then four, the larger value is to its right. And this repeats for every subtree uh, indefinitely. So there are a couple ways to go about solving this problem. Um, one of the simplest ways that I can think of is performing an in-order traversal and saving each value to an array and then just retrieving the second last value from that array and you will always have your answer. So if you don't know what in-order traversal is, it's just a way to uh, traverse the tree in order from smallest element to the largest element. So just doing a quick example on the tree right here, essentially an in-order traversal will look like this. We start from the left node and then go to its parent and then its uh, right child. And we just repeat this recursively for um, every tree. So it will look like this. We start here, we go here, 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 here. So let's say we have an array. And we put all our values in. One, three, four, five, seven, eight, twelve. So all we need to do at this point is now that we've exhausted every node in our tree, we can just return this element and that will be our second largest. You can also do this with reverse in order traversal, which is exactly what you'd expect it to be. It's just doing all this, but in reverse and then getting the second value uh, from the start. It accomplishes the same goal. Um, so yeah, that's just one way of doing it. And the in order traversals can, like I said, be done recursively or iteratively. So this approach, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it does use space because we use an array to essentially keep track of um, all of the values that we've encountered. So there is space involved in that, but we actually don't have to use, we don't actually have to create any extra space uh, when doing this problem. So let's go ahead and look at another implementation. All right, so you may be thinking to yourself, finding the second largest element is pretty easy. I mean. Since we already know that the left side is only concerned with, or the left side only contains uh, numbers that are less than the parent, and the right side contains numbers that are uh, greater than the parent, it stands to reason that we really only need to worry about um, the right half of the tree. So that kind of leads us to shift our focus to only one side of the tree, which kind of makes things a bit simpler. So in our case, if we're trying to find the second largest element, uh, especially with this example, you can very easily do that by essentially starting from the root right here and then just moving downward until you get to the very last element and then just simply returning its parent. In this case, this would yield the correct answer because eight is in fact the second largest number uh, in this tree. This does not work for every single case. So this is a pretty balanced tree right here, but what if I uh, made things just a little bit more complex. And we wanna see if the logic still holds up. All right, so as you can see, I've added a subtree, or a left subtree to the very, to the rightmost node. So this is an edge case you need to consider because, because before we calculated the second largest uh, node, or second largest element in our tree by recursing to the rightmost element and then returning its parent. In this case, that would not work because if we keep moving right until we encounter no more right child nodes, and then we return uh, the parent, we're effectively ignoring the existence of any left subtrees. So in this case, this is something that needs to be handled. As you can see right here, just eyeballing this entire binary search tree, we can see that the second largest element is in fact 11 right here. So we can stick with the original implementation where we just keep moving right until we can't move right anymore. But at every step of the way we check if the next node is non-existent or none, 
but there happens to be a left subtree, then check that as well. And by check, I mean move into the subtree and then keep moving right until, until the rightmost node has no left or right subtree. If that's the case, and that means we've reached the largest node in the left subtree of the largest element in the binary search tree. And so this works perfectly because in the event that the largest node in a tree has a left subtree, then we're essentially just trying to find the largest element of that subtree because the largest element of that subtree is the second largest element within the entire tree. And this recursive check to find the second largest number works no matter how many left subtrees you have. So let's say for example, this 11, or well, we, we'd have to essentially arrange the entire tree to have a larger number set so we can put more numbers. Let's just say for example, we have different numbers and there's another left subtree right here and that continues doing the same thing that we've done here. It would handle that case because it would recursively check uh, every left subtree of the largest element uh, within that subtree. And it would essentially just repeat the process until we found uh, the correct answer. So by implementing this edge case, or by implementing this check into our algorithm, we're able to, we are able to account for an important edge case. So the runtime for this problem is O of H. Uh, you can get away with saying O of N because we're iterating through N elements, but I like to say O of H because O of H stands for height. In our case, we're just traversing uh, rightward um, as much as we can. So essentially we're traversing down the height of the tree. So as you can see, this is like, this tree is four levels deep. So that would be the height, the height is four. We're essentially just dealing with four uh, nodes at this point. So just to be a bit more uh, precise, I just, when dealing with trees, I like to say that the runtime, usually runtime can be O of H uh, because we're just talking about iterating or moving through the height of the tree itself. So I would say that the runtime is O of H. So in the case of this problem, uh, the space-time complexity can change. So if you're going with a recursive solution, then the answer will be O of H because we're just recursing through the height of the tree, essentially. Kind of the same answer as before because as we recurse, we're adding those function calls to a call stack. So that would have H values in it or H items in it. So space-time can be O of H, but any recursive implementation can be done iteratively as well. So depending on which way you do it, it can either be O of H or constant time. Because if we do it iteratively, then we don't incur any of that space on the call stack. So it's really up to you, but it's either of these answers right here. All right, so that's gonna do it for this one, and I'll see you guys in the code walkthrough. So first things first, let's define the class. We'll just call it solution. So let's define our first function. So we'll call it uh, find second largest. And so the input would just be a root node. So we'll just say root. All right. So we'll do a preliminary check to make sure that our tree has enough nodes because there's no point trying to find the second largest if the input is not formed. So let's just get that out of the way real quick. We can just do if the root is none or the left and right is also none. So that'll look like this. In this case, we can just raise uh, an error. We can just say like a value error because um, at this point we're not going to progress with the algorithm. So then we can just say something like tree must have at least two nodes. Seems about right. All right, moving on. So with this problem, usually I always say that we can do everything recursively and you can do it recursively, but for this approach, I wanna try exploring an iterative approach because anything that can be done recursively can be done iteratively. So just a heads up. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to establish a variable called current, which is just hold our root. And then given the nature of this problem, it makes sense to just use a while loop and keep moving until current is none. So we say while current, and then we can perform our logic. All right, so let's write out the first case that we'll encounter. So the first case is essentially the second largest 
element in the binary search tree will be the node right before the rightmost node. So what this will look like in code is we'll just essentially do a check to say, and all we're looking for is if the, if we're at the second largest node, then that second largest node's right node will not have any left or right children. If that's the case, then that's how we know we've reached the second largest element and we can just simply return it. So that'll look like this. We can say if current.write and current.write. So we're looking at the next right node and then we're looking at that right node. So in this case, we're looking at the largest element. We're looking at the largest element's left node. Or sorry, and not. So we're checking if the largest element's left node does not exist and not current dot right dot right. So we're checking if we have another right node from our current node, but then that right node does not have any left or right children. If that check passes, then we just return the current value. So we'll say current.val and we have our answer. And so now what we can do is just move along. So we'll just make current equal current dot right. And so this will just keep moving rightward until uh, this check passes. But remember the second edge case I discussed? Well, that's not covered here. So we need to account for that. So before we check for the second rightmost element right here, what we can do first is check to see if we've reached the largest element. If we've reached the largest element, then we can uh, account for the second edge case. So we can check if there's no more right nodes, but if there is a left node. If there is a left node, then that means, or if there's a left node of the largest element, that means that the largest element of that left subtree will actually contain the second largest element overall. So we're actually gonna to have to write a helper function for this. So first, let me just write the if statement. So if we say if current.left and not current.right. So if there's no more right nodes, but there is a left subtree, then we can return, and I'm going to write a function that we haven't written out yet, find largest current.left. So we're finding the largest node of the current left subtree or of the left subtree and so what we're going to do now is write another function that will help us find our answer so this one's just called find largest and it does exactly as you expect it finds the largest element so this one's pretty straightforward this one just keeps moving right until uh, it can't move right anymore so the logic will be very similar we can just say current equals to root so while current, if not current dot right, so if we can't move right anymore, then return current dot val. So return the current value, the largest value. If that check doesn't pass, then we just update current to move right again and continue that until we can't anymore. So yeah, this is pretty much it. This is the entire algorithm for finding the second largest element in a binary search tree. So in our case, we have an O of one space time complexity because we aren't using recursion, so there's nothing on the call stack and we're doing everything iteratively. So you can think of this as, this is technically O of N runtime, but you can also get away with saying O of H, um, H just being a variable for height. So if the height is three, then that's how many iterations we'll have to go through. You can give it that way, but O of H, O of N, both correct answers. Uh, very simple and quick approach. So hopefully you learned a lot from this and how you can also solve uh, binary search tree problems using iteration. So hopefully you guys learned a lot and I'll see you in the next one.